They were just simple hairdressers who followed the progression of their livelihood and talent and turned it into a hair empire, known and respected the world over. Having survived the war years of the 1940s, Francesco Miscolo opened the first of several hair salons in Scafati, Italy. Francesco's wife, Maria, helped run the salons, enabling Francesco to travel to London and enter the world of high fashion. Francesco worked for a salon in Trendy Knightsbridge and eventually brought Maria to England with their family. By 1957, Francesco had achieved a reputation as an excellent hairstylist, winning hairdressing awards worldwide and was the father of five sons. Giuseppe, Tony, Gaetano, Guy, Bruno, Andre and Anthony. In late 1963, the two oldest sons, with the help of their father, founded the first Tony and Guy salon in Clapham, England, which was just the beginning. At the time, I was already working in a salon, and the, the proprietor of the salon offered me the salon if I wanted. And I called Tony, there was already a hairdresser with my father somewhere else, and we got together in 1963, we called it Tony and Guy. Uh, Bruno started back in the 60s. We were having all the fun with young ladies, uh, nice girls, uh, getting up late while he was getting up at five in the morning. So he thought, oh, I'm not having this. I'm going to be a hairdresser too. And it was really fantastic to have him around because he brought new ideas, geometric cut, unisex, and a new look for Tony and Guy. I went to Morris School of Hairdressing and once I finished the course there, I joined uh, Tony and Guy in Clapham. Guy and Bruno began to do session work around London, which resulted in the publication of many of their images. This helped solidify their reputation and allowed Bruno to open a shop in the prestigious West End of London called Mayfair. Once on now, there are four brothers. Tony, Guy, Bruno, and who came to London in search of fame and fortune and found a lock of hair. Anthony started very young, actually, uh, almost as young as me, uh, remember, he was in the late 60s. It was a fantastic idea for him to come in. Now we had the four brothers doing hairdressing. Not only that, but he was the youngest and he was the new motivation for the whole team. And like Guy, he was more of a natural hairdresser. I don't ever remember anybody actually teaching him. I used to go to the salon every day after school, help my dad, help my brothers, just kind of hang out. Uh, but officially started when I was 15 in uh, our salon in Streatham. You could see when you got a, a, a long head of hair, no fear, just chopped it all off. In the early 70s, the hair became really quite wild. We were doing a lot of plaits, a lot of weaving. Got really, really interested in doing a lot of session work, a lot of magazine work. It became a material and it was inspiring. My first major show was in 1977. And to be on stage at that early age was incredible. I worked very closely with my brother Bruno. And, and we did uh, this show where I did The Veil and it was just really a natural progression, really trying to make something very creative and very different. Bravo! Bravo! The inspiration for the samurai was really myself and Pat, my wife. And all of a sudden we, we came up uh, with a situation where we were working with gel and moulding the hair like plaster and we, we ended up moulding it onto cardboard and then taking the cardboard away and it gave us this amazing shape. We presented the model with the samurai, myself and Pat, and she came out on stage and no one could really see it was real, you know, they thought it wasn't real. And then what we did is we poured a bottle of champagne over it and pulled it all down. The photographers never captured it and they wanted to capture it but they didn't obviously, they thought it was a hat. It gave us the opportunity 
to do shows and to share the ideas that we were doing to people and hairdressers all over the world. It was brilliant. Every six months we would do our own collection in London and what was happening, they, they were looking very similar to everyone else. So we, I decided with, the, with Pat, because she bought me a camera, to, to actually start taking pictures. In the early 80s, photography became a passion for Anthony. He worked with the top fashion magazines with complete control of the hair, fashion and photography. I think the fact that I didn't train as a photographer um, allowed me to break the rules because I didn't really know them. Whatever you wanted to do, you, you could create. So we were doing a lot of stretching of negatives, putting um, you know, emulsion onto clean film and, and really trying some different things and it was, it was very exciting. The 1980s were a very creative and exciting time for the company. Anthony develops a world-class artistic team in London. The artistic team is probably one of the most important things in uh, the, the growth of Tony and Guy because it allows you to, to have people that are all believing in the one vision and the one goal, which is obviously in our culture of hairdressing that we do, but with the, the educational discipline, with the photographic imagery, and with the way that we run our salons, you need everybody to be focused on one area. So the team is, is, is crucial. 